Good day class! Today, let's study about stories and intertidal zones. Before we proceed, let's have a short review. Bibigyan ko kayo ng limang questions dapat masagot ninyo. First question, what is the other term used for flowering plants that reproduce through seeds found in fruits? Answer, it's angiosperms. Second question, what do you call the non-flowering plants which use seeds to reproduce instead of spores? Answer, it's gymnosperms. Third question, this refer to the type of plant reproduction involving fragmentation, budding, and spore formation. Answer, it's a sexual reproduction. Fourth question, this refer to the type of plant reproduction involving the fusion of male and female gametes common in flowering plants. Answer, it's sexual reproduction. Fifth and last question, what part of a flowering plant contains the male and the female components? Answer, it's flower. I hope you did get all the answers correctly. Now, let's proceed. Interaction among living things. Ito yung tinatawag na ecology. Ecology is the study of the relationship between living organisms and their environments. Relasyon sa pagitan ng mga bagay na may buhay at sa lugar na kanilang kinabibilangan. Yan yung tinatawag na ecology. At sa araw na to, ikaw ay magiging isang ecologist or someone who studies these relationships. Mayroon ako mga ipapakilala sa iyong mga salita para mas lalo mong maintindihan ang ating aralin. First word is population. When an organisms of the same kind live together, they form a group called population. As we can see in the picture, we have here a population of penguins. Pwedeng population of birds, population of fishes, population of monkeys. Sila yung mga bagay na may buhay na pare-pareho lang sila na sama-sama silang naninirahan sa isang lugar. Population interacts with other populations to form a community. So, hindi lang isa, maaaring dalawa o higit pang population na nagkakaroon ng ugnayan sa isa't isa. Ang picture na nakikita natin is an example of community kung saan hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa ang population na nakikita natin. Sama-sama silang naninirahan doon sa lugar na yon. The community interacts with the air, water, soil, sunlight, and other non-living things in its surroundings to form an ecosystem. Sa ecosystem, nandito na yung biotic factors at saka yung abiotic factors. Bio, which means life. Yung abiotic factors naman, ito yung mga walang, bu walang buhay. So, nagkakaroon ng interaction ang mga bagay na may buhay sa mga bagay na walang buhay. Dito sa larawan na nakikita natin, hindi lang isang population ang present. O hindi lang isang grupo ng nilalang o living things ang present dyan. Kung saan, meron silang interaction doon sa kanilang kapaligiran. Sa tubig, sa hangin na nando doon, sa climate na nando doon. Yan ang tinatawag na ecosystem. Intertidal zone and estuarine ecosystem. Ano naman itong tinatawag na intertidal zone? Ang isa pang tawag dito is seashore. It is known as the area where land meets the sea between high and low tide zones. The daily changes in the tides play a major role to the life of living organism uh, or living things in this area. Sa intertidal zone, pabago-bago ang lagay ng tubig dito kasi dito nangyayari ang, ang high tide at saka ang low tide. Ibig sabihin, bumababa ang tubig, may mga parte rito na nawawala ang tubig, tapos maya-maya, magkakaroon na naman ng tubig. So, yun yung tinatawag na tides. 
Ang pabago-bagong lagay ng tides dito ay may malaking kinalaman sa mga nakatira dito. Intertidal zones are home to many kinds of marine animals and birds. May nakatira sa intertidal zone. Kadalasan ng mga makikita dito ay mga marine animals at mga birds. Yung picture na nandito, it shows the subdivision of intertidal zone. Nandito yung upper intertidal zone, mid intertidal zone, at saka yung lower intertidal zone. So sa bawat zone na yan, iba't iba rin yung organisms na maaaring tumira. Estuary. An estuary is a body of brackish water near the coast where fresh water from rivers and streams flow into the ocean and mixes with salt water. Ang estuary, iba naman ito doon sa intertidal zone. Kasi ang estuary, it is considered as body of water. Kung saan, nagkakaroon ng uh, paghahalo between sa tubig na nagmumula sa river o yung mga tubig tabang at sa tubig na nagmumula naman sa karagatan o yung mga salt water. So, ang ibig sabihin, sa estuary, ang tubig na makikita dito ay magkahalo, fresh water and salt water. Iyon yung tinatawag na brackish water, mixture of salt water and fresh water. Estuaries are called nurseries of the seas because of its very unique characteristic. Some organisms choose to reproduce in these areas. Tama, meron pong nakatira sa estuaries. In fact, tinagurian siyang nurseries of the seas. Kasi maraming mga marine animals ang pinipili ang lugar na to kasi bagay ito para sa pagpaparami nila. Estuaries are important because they filter sediments and pollutants before the fresh water from the river enters the seas or oceans. They also filter the salt from the seas and the oceans before water enters the mouth of the river. Pag sinabi natin pollutants, ito yung mga pwedeng makasama doon sa fresh water or salt water. Yung mga sediments naman, ito yung mga uh, bagay na tipak or kaparte lang ng isang bahagi ng isang bagay. So, ang estuaries, bago makarating yung tubig papunta ng rivers or makarating papunta ng seas, dito siya parang nasasala. Both intertidal and estuaries provide habitats for many organisms. Tahanan sila ng maraming may buhay. These habitats have a lot of abiotic factors that affect the organisms thriving in them. So, ano-ano ba ang pwedeng makaapekto sa intertidal and estuaries? So, these factors are, first, we have waves, which refer to the movement of the surface of the water. Ang waves naman, yan yung alon, eh, no? Sa surface lang o sa ibabaw ng, ng uh, tubig siya. Uh, ang kelp, which is the picture dito sa may right side natin, sila yung mga root-like organism na kumakapit sila sa mga bato para hindi sila matangay ng waves. So, adapted sila na manirahan dito kahit pa merong waves. Salinity refers to the amount of salt in water. So, ang alat ng tubig ay may kinalaman sa mga nilalang na pwedeng mabuhay dito. So, isa na nga dito ay ang mangroves at saka yung blue crab. So, ibig sabihin, adapted sila na manirahan dito. Third is the temperature, which refers to the level of hotness or coldness of water. So, may kinalaman din ang temperatura ng tubig para sa mga naninirahan sa lugar na yan. Fourth is the amount of sunlight. So, yung amount ng sikat ng araw, nakaka-apekto sila sa mga organismo, lalong-lalo na sa algae, seaweeds, sea grasses, and other marine plants. Kasi, dumidepende ang mga organismo na ito sa dami or amount ng sunlight na pwede nilang makuha. Types of soil. It differ 
It differ depending on the strength of waves and kinds of rock present in the area. Some are full of rock, sand, pebble, or clay. So, ang stores and intertidal zone, tatandaan natin na palaging may kinalaman or palaging pwedeng maka-apekto sa kanila ang abiotic factor. So, yung number 5 is types of soil. May kinalaman siya sa uri ng lupa na meron doon. Biotic factors in an ecosystem are composed of all plants, animals, and microorganisms living in it. These organisms live in different habitats found in intertidal zones and estuaries, such as, first, coral reefs. These are the areas of estuaries, estuaries which part of the subtidal zone where biodiversity is rich. Biodiversity refers to the abundance of different living organisms living in an area. So itong susunod na tinatalakay natin ay may kinalaman na sa biotic factors o dun sa mga may buhay na naninirahan doon sa zone na yon. So ito na nga yung coral reefs kung saan ito yung area sa estuaries na Napakaraming nila lang na naninirahan dito. Second one is the salt marshes, which is the areas in the estuary that are filled with seawater during high tides and are drained during low tide. They are marshy because they are filled with decomposing plant matter. So yan po ang itsura ng salt marshes. Clams, mussels, oysters, crabs, snails, and shrimps are found here. Third, mudflats. These are areas in estuaries where mud from the seas or rivers is deposited. So itong estuaries na to, uh, minsan marami kang makikita dyang mga migratory birds na nanginginain. Crabs, and dollars, mussels, clams, mollusks. Shellfish and some fish are found here. Yung ibang mga organisms na naninirahan dito, ibinabao nila yung sarili nila sa putikan. Next, rocky shores. These are areas in estuaries where solid rocks are found. Plankton, brittle stars, starfish, or meat crab, barnacles, limpets, periwinkles are some of the organisms found here. So kahit mabato yung lugar na yan, May mga nakatira pa rin dyan. Next is the mangrove forest, which are areas in estuaries that are filled with mangrove trees. Mangroves protect against erosion caused by waves, wind, and tides. They also protect coral reefs and seagrass beds. They are also breeding grounds for different kinds of fish and shellfish. So itong nakikita natin sa Larawan is the mangrove forest. So, ayan yung mga mangrove trees. Diyan sa lugar na yan, maraming nakatira din dyan. Next is the feeding relationships in an intertidal zone and estuarine ecosystem. Our planet is a huge ecosystem that consists of living and non-living factors. Totoo naman, di ba? Sa planeta natin, napalaki, napakalaking ecosystem yan. Kasi sa bawat lugar, May mga population na nagkakaroon ng interaction sa non-living things doon sa lugar na yon. Energy and nutrients are transferred from the producers to decomposers in a feeding relationship. The living things and any ecosystem consists of the producers, consumers, and decomposers. Producers are green plants, algae or microorganisms that are capable of making their own food. So, ang mga producers, kaya nilang gumawa ng sarili nilang pagkain. They provide energy and nutrients to other organisms. So, ang mga producers, sila yung nagbibigay ng pagkain sa iba pang mga organismo. They make their own food by converting their energy from the sun to chemical energy. So, sa ganong paraan sila gumagawa ng sarili nilang pagkain. Kailangan nila ng sunlight para magkaroon ng 
ng pagkain na maibibigay nila sa iba pang mga organisms. So, katulad nga ng green plants, uh, kailangan nila ng sunlight kasi sa pamamagitan nun, uh, nabubuo yung, yung pagkain, yung mga stored food sa bawat parts ng kanilang katawan. Consumer Consumers get their energy from plants and other organisms. Animals and people are consumers. Pag sinabi natin consumers, sila yung nangangailangan ng mga producers. Sila yung gagamit kung ano yung maibibigay ng mga producers natin. Animals and people are consumers. Siyempre, nakadepende lang tayo sa mga producers kasi hindi naman natin kayang gumawa ng sarili natin pagkain. There are three types of consumers, the primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Pagka sinabi natin primary consumers, these are organisms that eat plant only, or they are also called herbivore. So may mga organismo o nila lang na kumakain lang ng plants, ang tawag sa kanila ay herbivores. Dito sa mga picture na ibinigay ko, ang herbivore dito is yung grasshopper. Siya yung considered as primary consumer kasi ang kinakain lang niya ay plant. Secondary consumers naman are carnivores that eat herbivores. Ang carnivores, animal eater sila o kumakain sila ng karne. So dito, raccoon is the secondary consumer kasi kakainin niya yung Uh, primary consumer na kumakain lang ng plants. And then tertiary consumers are carnivores that eat other carnivores. Pwede maging example natin sa tertiary consumer is lion. Pwede niyang kainin yung raccoon na kumain ng grasshopper na kumain ng plant. Decomposers get their energy from breaking down dead organisms and their wastes. Ang mga decomposers, sila yung Tagagiba, sila yung tagabulok, sila yung parang tagapagtunaw ng mga dead organisms and their wastes. Ang ginagawa nila, they break down these dead organisms and wastes and then nutrients from them are returned to the environment. So pag nabulok, naagnas ang isang patay na, saan ba mapupunta yon Hindi ba? Babalik at babalik lang yan sa environment. Yung nutrients na mapupunta sa environment, kakailanganin na naman ulit ng mga plants yon para lumaki and mag-develop. So in here, fungi and bacteria are example of decomposers. Food chain. It is a series of organisms that feed on other organism and so on. Kung titignan natin yung picture, makikita natin yung pagkain ng bawat isa. Ibig sabihin, mula doon sa producer, uh, may series of kainan na nangyayari. So, from producer, kakainin siya ng primary consumer, which is the grasshopper. Kakainin naman ng secondary consumer, ang primary consumer. And then, kakainin naman ng tertiary consumer, which is the snake. Yung secondary consumer na kumain ng primary consumer. Na kumain ng producer. At dito, may final consumer, which is the hawk na kapag ka siya ay namatay, i-decompose siya ng mga decomposer. So, example natin dito is yung fungi, yung mga bacteria. Food web naman is consists of two or more food chains. So, kung titingnan natin yung picture, ano, mula doon sa tomato plant, which is the producer, kakainin siya ng iba't ibang animals na kumakain ng plants lang and then kakainin sila ng meat eater o mga carnivores and then kakainin na naman sila ng tertiary consumer so yung tertiary consumer natin dito is the lion and yung hawk so that's it for our lesson sana meron kayong natutunan so, until next time bye